Hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is time to do another Sopranos reaction. It is time to watch some more Sopranos. My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student here. Sino Shea absolutely shooting his freaking shot. And I am watching this amazing show for the first time. And we are up to episode 9 of season 6. This one is titled The Ride. And no, I'm not talking about the Drake song off of Take Care. This is the Sopranos episode. Let's get into it. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Oh, he's watching Saul. <laughs> Which Saul is this one? I haven't seen this one. I've only seen the first two, to be fair. But yo, what are you doing in there? I'm gonna miss the previews. Oh, they going to the movies? What? Tell me your earring went in the fucking drain again. I'm pregnant. I know it's my fault. I know I shouldn't let you take off the rubber. I, I thought we were okay. I was due for my period. My cycle's like clockwork. Stop. I'll call the clinic tomorrow. Stop talking. He want to be a father. He want to be a father. Let's get married. Drive to AC, make a day out of it. Are you serious? Brother thinks he's Jagged Edge or something. Let's get married. My baby. I actually couldn't have kids and I wanted them so bad. No, she, it's not that she what couldn't have. have. It's that she, there's a chance she might not have. You can bet she's having some other asshole's kid though, that fucking tramp. Okay, I just want to... I, I love that juxtaposition cut as well with them getting married. Let's go somewhere else, get married. And then obviously Paulie and Patsy walking in the church where usually, you know, people are married. In, uh, uh, obviously, it depends on the religion. But in Chris's case, it would be in a church. Um, that's where, you know, that's where the vows are made. Uh, that's, where, that's where the contracts are signed. <laughs> that's where you sign your life away. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, but... Listen, I'm not going to get tricked by this show. I'm not going to get tricked by this highlight from Chris because it's been Chris's story all along. Whenever there's such a highlight with Chris, it's usually overshadowed by some underlying issue, um, you know, that's plagued him. And it, it, or it's just his character. It's in his nature. And we saw um, in the episode... Um, episode eight um in terms of like him going to la we saw the drug issues that he's been delving back into um we've seen his tempers um flare again and i feel sorry for this woman um who's a pregnant individual and could possibly get the same treatment or will in my opinion get the same treatment as a just because she's pregnant doesn't mean she's gonna get hit i know like chris is a woman beater like let's not let's not like you know let's not um gloss over this all right um so i feel like yeah, Chris is slowly going down that route where if he does make a mistake in the mafia side of things, there's no more chances. So he's treading a fine line already. So he's got to be careful with this. And it's one of those seasons where I feel like Tony's made a lot of bad decisions. Christopher's going to continue to make bad decisions. And it's only a matter of time for Christopher. I've said it time and time again. Listen, I'm not going to get caught up in the you know um, greatness of the moment, but I, I feel happy for him. Obviously, okay, you're going down the right path in life, but at the same time, we know what these mafia people are like, and I feel sorry for the woman. Patsy, the old. <laughs> Patron saint of Zeppelins. <laughs> Could use a shot of laca. Fix that hell of two. We close the streets for five days, hire the food vendors, rides, etc. Day two, we start the procession. Push a statue up and down the block. You say a couple of prayers and that's that. <laughs> All said and done, you get your rent. About that, as I was telling Mr. Rusamano, frankly, $10,000 struck me as quite low. It is what it is. Look, I'm new here. I certainly don't want to rock the boat. I realize there are certain neighborhood traditions. It's just that given the current cost, we feel an increase is long overdue. What kind of increase? We feel 50,000 would be a more equitable donation. <laughs> 50. Just this year, we started a soup kitchen for the homeless, a reading program for bilingual children, 
Yeah. Well, it seems to me the church has plenty in its coffers for all those pedophilia lawsuits. <laughs> the parishes deal with the church <laughs> just as with Johnny Soprano's fees. These are different times, Mr. Gautieri. Well, some things don't change. A couple of days, Joe Vella from the Anagon will be by with the float. Transfer the statue from his niche, pick up the hat, and other stuff. You say things don't change. This feast was started over a hundred years ago in a spirit of giving. Italian immigrants, the working poor, gave what little money they had to honor St. El Zaire. He's the patron saint from my grandparents' town, Ariano di Puglia. Many of those folks gave their gold wedding bands, which were melted down to make the saint's hat. Yeah? Frankly, I don't feel safe giving it over this year. We use it every year. It's part of the tradition. I understand, but I'm sorry. Given the tenor of this conversation, I sense there's a possible criminal element in this neighborhood that can be the most precious piece of local history. This priest ain't afraid to cut back. Grand, you wouldn't have that sense. It would demonstrate to me that you take this feast as seriously as the people who began it. Okay, Father. Nice meeting you. I don't want to see a priest get beat down, man. I know poorly in his ways. They're just going to hustle the statue, probably. Fuck the hat. <laughs> you know what I think it is? You are now looking at a newly married man. Holy shit. Why don't, really? why don't he make it a big occasion? What the fuck brought this on? Visit from the store coming up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you never heard of pulling out? <laughs> Sweetheart, look Chris Bob over here. You know what you're having? Boy, I hope. I tell you, T, with the example you set, plus the wisdom I learned from AA, it's an inspiration. Building blocks, home, family. Uh, that's what it's all about, kid. Just water for me. My son will be my strength. <laughs> Why my son? Why can't yeah. I be my child? I said? Just pray it's healthy. <laughs> like... Oh, what do you know in the office? Talk to Dr. Sapola. I don't pay for missed appointments. To the baby. To the baby. To the baby. Yeah, to the baby. Oh. <laughs> Make a note to call Freddy at the Sawbones. He wants to sponsor the cannoli eating contest. I better see an envelope by tomorrow. <laughs> All about making the dollar, baby. All about making the bread. My guy at the way station's on board. Hey, you know how to get back, right? I'm Matt Blaster. Alright, see you guys. Gordon Craig. Still wine. Oh, any chance to make any chance. Any chance to get a score. And look at the way they reversed into it. Uncle and nephew pulling up. Who the fuck are you guys? That's who I am, you man. Whoa, whoa. On the ground, I'll blow your greasy fucking heads off. You guys cops? How's your incision, Lieutenant? <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking with the vipers here, asshole. Ooh, really? What's that, your Girl Scout troop? Fuck, they, shut up! They probably think they have do, cops man? on their payroll. That could have gone hella bad. That could have gone hella bad. Getting Pine Barrens flashbacks right there with the I hit him, I fucking hit him. Fucking old school shit. Opportunity knock. Knock. Kick the fucking door in. Oh fuck. You okay, T? Fucking ankle. I guess I sprained him. The adrenaline, the adrenaline. You smell that? It's fucking autumn. It's like the first full night when you were a kid and the air's all crisp and you start smelling people's fireplaces. It smells like Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> they could be hiding some shit under the yeah, wine, you never know. Longville, 1986. 86? Ooh, maybe. Show me the money. <laughs> What's your corkage fee? 
Got Tony walking like Vito. How about that prick's face when he saw the gat? <laughs> Grizzly Adams, motherfucker. Oh, bo, bo. Whoa, take it easy. <laughs> Don't away with the wipers. How's that wine, good? <laughs> it really is. I gotta say. Tell you though, when he pulled that trigger, I almost shit myself. <laughs> Two individuals who have both so been shot be had close calls with death. They're like, yeah, let's toy with death again. Let, let's tread those fine margins again. <laughs> They'll never change. Why? You should toast your wedding, at least. Your kid? Discipline, that's all. Brother, you were drinking two episodes ago. <laughs> you saved my life. In a lot of ways. But you've been there for me, too. Don't think I don't know that. There were times it was hard with me and you. I didn't understand. You were young. <laughs> Stubborn. You always had my back, though. Like that day when I came to the house. I gotta talk to you. Wrong. What's the matter? You know, I've always been loyal to you, Tim. What are you trying to tell me, Christopher? I can't even see it. Oh, fuck. Adriana. What about her? Can't have kids. Pets. Oh, oh, this is it. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. How long? How fucking long? A year, I don't know. This that. When'd you find out? This that addition to long term parking. She told me last night. What do they know? Huh? What'd she give them? I don't know. <laughs> I take a lot. Ralphie? I don't know. Oh, Tony, how could you even think that? <laughs> Where is she? Hey, I just started watching The Wire. Where the fuck is she? Where is she? Please don't. Where is she? She's home. I can't. Can't do it. No. no, please don't make me do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Right. I can't. Right. I can't do it. I'm gonna take care of it. <laughs> All right. Come on. Come on. I was. You go upstairs. You go out the back door. Don't talk to Carmela. You go someplace, have a cup of coffee. You wait till I call you. Huh? It's okay. We're gonna take care of you. So is this before he went to the petrol station? The gas station to fill up and saw the family? Or is it after? Or is it left ambiguous? Oh, nice delay on the subtitles there. Freaking streaming service. Love you too. <laughs> Again, thank you. 
Freaking, we're having input delay on the on the freaking show streaming. I like it. Welcome, Joan Gillespie, Pagano Realty. Kelly Moltisanti spoke on the phone. My husband, Christopher. How do you do? Is it me or does why? Why does Kelly look awfully a lot like an older version of Meadow? Like I could be Meadow's sister in a way. Um, I don't know why. Or this is what I'm yeah. Talking about. Wayne, man. Or the girl that plays Velma in Scooby Doo. She's fantastic. The OG Scooby Doo's. Sub Zero in the stainless steel kitchen. We'll take it. <laughs> He's what we call an impulse buyer. <laughs> oh, shouldn't we see the inside first, sweetie? If it has an inside, we'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly seems sweet. Come on. But at the same time. Don't get lost in the highlights, Ellie. It rains. Ohio State figures your rebate for bad weather. Yeah, that's not a reason I don't live in Ohio. <laughs> Easy on the sugar, honey. Tell me I'm sweet enough. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone at this, everyone at this feast. Everyone at the carnival. Price, what do you do now? Throat follow injury. Talk to me. Let me talk to you a minute. <laughs> a couple of guys we know, they're uh, Lebanese or some shit. <laughs> Diverted a truck, whole semi trailer full of central multivitamins. Oh, that's a fucking score. Yeah, the thing is, it's got to be unloaded out of state because the troopers are on it. You interested? Could be distributed in uh, Long Island. It's my end. 50 50. What's got to be done now, tonight? Tonight. All right. But in this case, I'm thinking we spared John the stress of having to hear about this. That's you and Johnny's problem. Well, the situation he's in, he's got enough to deal with. Yo, feels like we go handle this tonight. We'll get the boys on it tonight. Is that Julia? Oh my gosh. Every time I see a theme park and I'm watching something on TV involving a theme park, I just think of Final Destination 3. And yeah, that 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 movie has scarred me forever with theme parks. You pray? Said it says she ran off. Oh, she doesn't call me for almost two years. My birthday, Christmas. You two always did have a very difficult relationship. The FBI came to my home. You'd be amazed at the questions they asked me. Liz? They admitted they think that he killed her. Come on, Liz. You're drunk. Drunk? It's called depression. I haven't had a drink in years. Yo, Liz speaking nothing but facts! So that thing, Rusty Milio, I heard that happen. Good job. It's a little less cash than we talked about. There's a bonus in there for you. Drugs. It's okay if I fix. Or just take me in my car. Rock out with your cock out. Fireplace. Parquet floors. Bumper pool table in the basement. Chris, don't fall into this trap here. House I'm getting. You'll come over. Christmas, Christmas Eve, maybe. You don't want these type of people around your kids, I man. I mean, you're the type of person anyway, but like, Chris. You know, you really got to get yourself some help with this shit. Thank you. I will. I'm gone. You want some? Me? Nah. Okay. It's just, you know, if you want. That's the devil, Chris. That's the devil. The devil's in this car. Guess I could toot some. No, you motherfucker. I used to get diarrhea just from the smell of paper money. In a store, any fucking place. On account of all the baby laxative and the coke when you actually snort it. <laughs> I meant what I said, though. You need to get your ass to rehab. 
Look who's stalking! Fucking uh, Narcotics Anonymous or some shit. Nice. The leather. Fred Neil's the Dolphins playing. <laughs> and Chris is never changing. But uh, you were about to have a gift from God. You're about to have a child. That's Chris. That's Chris. I mean, the downfall already began ages ago, but like, this episode just solidifies it. It solidifies the depressing character Christopher Moltisanti is amongst the little highlights and glimpses we get. And I feel sorry for the people that actually love him. Though sometimes I think about Your downfall began long ago, my friend. That was crazy, that close-up, racking in focus on Chris on the right, whilst the lights were turned off. Ooh. Almost making it seem like he's homeless. With the dogs on the street. No hat. Wait. Is that... No, that's not the hat it's meant to have, is it? The... Yeah, there we go, yeah. So. <laughs> they couldn't acquire the funds for the gold hat this year. I'm proud of you, my friend. I'm not sure if this is actual, like, a real feast or, like, a real tradition thing or it's made for the purposes of the show. But I don't like the idea of the icon of a saint wrapped around with money. I have been debating all night whether to even say anything about this. Speak. <laughs> I ran into Liz LaServa at the feast. Yeah. She's got it <laughs> in her head that Christopher killed Adriana. <laughs> what? That's insane. I know. Then again, he does have a history of being free with his hands. Oh, that makes him OJ. She was probably drunk, huh? I, I really don't think she was. I, let me school you on domestic violence, okay? First and foremost, there's always a body. And 99 out of 100, and this comes straight from my cop buddies, it happens either in the bedroom or in the kitchen. He killed her. Believe me, with the forensics they got nowadays, the uh, fibers, we'd know about it. <laughs> the FBI came to her house, Liz. That's exactly my point. If they really thought he did it, how fast do you think they'd haul his ass in? That's how a grapes come. He dumps her daughter, all of a sudden he's Scott fucking Peterson. I thought A dumped him. You know what I mean. She was a sweet girl, A. But the two of them together was a toxic relationship. He's right in that department. Yeah, like, <laughs> have a rough time of it. And he's doing great, Christopher. He's a different person. He's married, he's got a kid on the way. He's focused. It's not sabotage's progress. Hmm? That's some good wine. <laughs> Drinking up all that bullshit. <laughs> Honestly, Tony as a cop would be crazy with all the cover-up stories he can come up with. Italia! Hello. Paul, it's Dr. Cipolla. I'm on my way out, but I received the results of your PSA test. And? Not to worry. But the numbers are a little higher than I prefer. What does that mean? Probably nothing. Likelihood is prostatitis. Simple inflammation. Do you have a history of prostate cancer in your family? Father, maybe? I don't know. Poor Paulie. Oh, the bad news keeps on getting worse this season. 
He's gonna freak out at the thought that he might have prostate cancer. I haven't seen Janice in a while. Yo, I'm not sure how safe it is to carry a baby like that on a ride like that. I know it's not going that quick, but at the same time, come on, man. Oh my gosh. What did I say? Final Destination 3. What did I say? What did I say? Oh, shit. Got the insurance claims. Woo! 17 degrees. Pauling on copper now. Yeah. Paulie, it's me. We had a problem down here. The ride, the teacups or whatever. A bolt busted, thing jammed up. Some people got hurt. Where's your guy on? He's talking to the cops. Fine, fuck it. What do you want from me? It's pretty bad, Paulie. You know? Lady broke a wrist. Some Puerto Rican kid lost some, some teeth. Oh, what am I, a fucking dentist? I don't know. I thought you'd want to know. Maybe come down or something. I gotta be up in the morning. I got my fucking biopsy. All right. I I'll take care of it. You don't want to face these issues front on. <laughs> now. If I close my eyes, I can still hear the screams. Well, we should all be thankful it's okay. My baby could have been killed, Tony. God forbid. You can bet the locals will be parading in with their lawsuits. They're mucho pesos. Just leave it alone, Janice. They are entitled to damages. Obviously, there was negligence. Good, so then I'll have excuses why they can't go to work. <laughs> when I think what could have happened to my baby. Oh my gosh, okay, we get it. I'm talking about you, Angel. Oh God, I want to bite those cheeks. Scumbag hillbilly. <laughs> yeah, and what did you do? Nothing. I was taking Sophia to the bathroom. What, what can Bobby do, man? He literally married one of the worst possible people to marry in the show. I'm sorry. Had a kid. Yo, Kelly, good looking. I'm not going to lie. So if it's, uh, I don't know, pop. Shots fired at Carmelo? What the we haven't had a Sunday dinner at the Sopranos in a while. She can milk this claim, Janice. You gotta move your car. Said I'm coming. Oh, is that the owner? Redneck fuck. My baby was on that ride, my wife. She woke up this morning, she could barely move her neck. I told the cops, mister, I'm sorry. Insurance will pay your hospital bill. 25,000. Cash. What? Ah! New Jersey has stringent liability laws. I told the guy hired me I'd have to put on a whole repair crew, work him all night. He wouldn't spring for it. Oh, Paulie, what are you talking about? First off, he wouldn't pay for my eighth fleet. I leased that to the Sorghum Festival uh -oh. down in Atlanta. Uh oh. We're going to have problems with Paulie here. Okay, the results of the steroid tests that are in. The contestants, they're all clean. <laughs> hey, cocksucker! It's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. You know what I'm talking about, you cheap fuck! Bobby, come on! Hey, everybody wants to get rich, but you don't scrimp on safety. Mind your business, Bobby! My baby girl is in that car. You owe me money, Paulie. I owe you shit. My wife's got nerve damage! Well, cut too! Get the fuck off me! Yo, don't play around with Bobby, Paulie. Don't play around with Bobby. He has every right to be angry, and we know Paulie's a stingy guy. Anytime he can make it out to get a cut himself. I was at the feast, St. Alziz. The thing for us kids was to blow powdered sugar on each other from the Zeppelis. I want to say, in that scene with Bobby um, going um, to the teacup or the teacup ride owner, um, I love how they tried to portray him in the same vein as Tony. You know, that low angle camera shot, you know, him towering over an individual. But I feel like, I think because it's Bobby, 
he lacks the intimidation and Hulk-like presence Tony has. Yeah, they're probably the same size, and they're probably, I think they're the same height, like, they're as big as each other, but I don't know, in a way, with at the countless times this show's portrayed Tony with that low-angle camera shot, um, he towers over individuals in a way that Bobby can't. I don't know, he just has that aura and presence over him. Yeah, Bobby, um, they utilized the low-angle camera shot to show, you know, obviously Bobby was towering over that individual, and yeah, said individuals on the floor, but I feel like he didn't have that presence um, like Tony does. Yeah, he's angry, to be fair, but like... Thousands of people either praying or eating. I don't know, part of me as well, Janice gets in Bobby's head to do something as well. Like, if that makes sense, like, she's the one nitpicking at his, like, in his ear for him to do something. And just for her to shut up, he does it. Um, I don't know if he's genuine. Like, he genuinely, I think... Could have like I feel like the old Bobby would have like the one with um Karen um I just feel like would have been more calm and level headed about the situation. Anyway, my sister was on this ride with my niece when it lurched forward pretty bad. God. Uh, he wasn't there, just tells here. But he was so busy getting money pinned to his ass that he got distracted and a bolt snapped. <laughs> <laughs> we blaming the saint now. <laughs> You look around, all these people are lined up for this shit. The kids, uh, adults, families. Right. Ooh. Yeah, they pay money so they can almost puke. They scream, they yell. What do you think that is? <laughs> They're bored. Are you bored? Yo, he just jealous. Um, Johnny took Janice to the fair when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I got shot in the pancreas and I recovered. No brain damage from the septic shock like everybody figured I'd have. You know my feelings. Every day is a gift. It just doesn't have to be a pair of socks. At this point, I don't think it's therapy. I think it's just someone for Tony to vent to and tell his thoughts. <laughs> and have that, you know. I'm joking. That release from getting everything out. But what are you going to do? It's the human condition. What is? I don't know. Yeah, this is Peter Gaultieri. I'm calling for the result of my biopsy again. I'm sorry, sir. They're still not in. <laughs> this is cancer we're talking about. I understand, sir. You'll have to call back tomorrow. More worried about himself than the other individuals who got hurt and dealing with those problems. Give me an espresso. Don't touch the lemon rind with your fingers. Auntie. Auntie. Hello, Paulie. What are you doing here? The home. It's one of our outings. So you're still over there, huh? They've been very nice, and your brother's trying to work out an arrangement. Is it true what they're saying? Who? How about what? The ride, the one that broke. You need to make a novena, Paulie. Those poor children. Well, what are you talking about? You let St. Elzia go without his hat. Well, will you listen to this? Fuck that voodoo, eh? <laughs> you your mother, a blessed nun. She had it coming. You both did. I didn't bring you up like that. You're a fake. That's how you brung me up. Fuck the two of you. That's sad, man. Where's the appreciation? Where's the appreciation? So, in keeping with this long-standing tradition of doing everything ass fucking backwards, <laughs> we are gathered here tonight for the bachelor party of already married man Christopher. <laughs> Little carmine. Man is not complete till he's married. Then he's finished. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I probably agree with. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Got to make an entrance. I'm more inclined to think as well that Tony was side with his sister's husband now. His niece could have got killed. Yeah, the fuck are the specials? Honey. Two for one. I got to go, Tom. The kids. Tony completely understands. Have fun tonight, huh? 
Specials, gentlemen. Pray tell, my good man. I got lamb tonight. Grilled, garlic, little rosemary. Rosemary? I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> dead jerk, dead jerk. What happened to the regular ride guy? The guy we used last year. Well, what he wanted to charge? I'm getting killed here, Tom. When your dad had St. Elsie's, it was a cash cow, and it was easy. Nowadays, between paying the church, these Puerto Ricans now, huh, my profits shrunk to nothing. But don't work as a business, get rid of it. Not for nothing, but a lot of that feast goes in your pocket. Whoa. I got a lot of my mind, T. I'm sorry. Like what? I had a biopsy. I might have prostate cancer. Well, it's a biopsy, right? Nine times out of ten, these things come back clean. I don't know. What don't you know? And don't walk yourself up into a state like you do. Hmm? I've been having headaches. I'm afraid maybe the thing may have sized. Jesus, will you listen to yourself, huh? With all your weird fucking shit about your body and the germophobias? You don't know shit yet. It's true. I'd rather face ten guys with shivs than something I can't see. Exactly. You're too susceptible to the psychics and the dirty <laughs> messages dirty fucking toilet seats. <laughs> it's a biopsy. Get a grip. You're right, T. You know, a negative thinking can help bring this shit on. Uh, walk something out with Bobby, huh? And Eddie Lynch coming down from Pennsylvania with an envelope. Meet him at the Bing. You call him, you set up a time. There he is. Bad lieutenant. Hey. I sold mine. 300 for the five cases. Is that cheap? What's new with you? Uh, he's sniffing, he's sniffing. I wonder if we're gonna have another conversation about aid in the basement. Like we did with the flashback scene. Where were the vipers? Fun night. Fucking A. Take it easy. Take it easy. Ten four. <laughs> you want to look on the other guy's face? <laughs> fucking Grizzly Adams douchebag. <laughs> Three AM. Oh, bro, he's gonna get even more paranoid now if he sees that. <laughs> doctor, this is call the service. I need to talk to the doctor. Is this an emergency? Of course. Doctor Sapola's out of town. Doctor Pagliari's on call. Do you want to be connected? Nah. The state of panic Paulie gets into. He has no mental sort of strength at all, at all. Holy mother of my. Bro, you don't have to do me like that, Sopranos. Can you believe this? After all this, she wants to go back on that ride. She cried for three nights after. The ride's closed, baby. You're getting PTSD, man. Show everybody how you can walk. Come on, they want to see. Okay, shut up. Show everybody how you can walk. <laughs> Let's go, Carmela. Number three. Number three, Carmela. Number three. I'm going to have one of the most joyful scenes in the show in this episode. See, she, he came up to her like the big back Blair. What the fudge? 
typical Norwegian dance, and who could do it better than Bobby and Sissy? See, Tony came up to her like the big back Blair. Hello. Come on, heal these wounds. I don't want to argue. Heal these wounds. Come on, Paulie. I love how Tony came up to her as well, like uh, the big black bear right there, Baloo from the Jungle Book. Like, he's just, you know, the big friendly bear, man. This whole show has been a ride, to be fair. The whole entire series has been one big ride. Hello, the 12 program, channel 55. You want some cookies? <laughs> hey, he needs a little loving, man. He needs that motherly figure in his life. <laughs> he needs a little caring. Oh, the autumn leaves Tony was talking about before. Oh, like it's autumn, like at the beginning of the episode. I kind of, in a way, I know Paulie's an utter idiot. Like, he's a prick. He's a, he's just as bad as everyone else in the show. But, like, I feel kind of bad that he didn't, you know, he spent all his life um, taking care of his auntie or, like, mother, um, you know, and because of that, he sacrificed getting married. He sacrificed having kids. So, really, he has nothing to go home to. He has nothing to go... And that's why he puts on, like... Obviously, he puts on the big... Um, the big brood persona in front of everyone, but like deep down, he's an individual layered with so many issues. And I feel like part of the problem is he never got married. He doesn't have kids. He doesn't have anything to live for outside the mafia life. Obviously he had his mother, but that just shows how important his auntie or mother was to him going back to her. Because like I said, he has nothing to go back to. If he had a family, if he had kids, I feel like he'd be less troubled in a way. Um, because at least he can look after his kids and stuff like that. Like, I don't know why he's so skimmed with the money to begin with. It's not like he's living, um, you know, a luscious lifestyle in terms of like he's taking care of so many individuals. It was just his mother in the end of the day and his mother that was the nun as well. So oh, obviously he had the guma as well, but like it wasn't his kids. It wasn't, it's not his blood. Um, and I just feel like that's the one thing Paul is missing from everyone else in the show, having that family. Um, and now even Chris has got that. Even Chris is married. Um, he's tied the knot and he's got a baby on the way. And you know, you all know how I feel about Chris at the moment anyway. So yeah. Um, yeah, this show is fantastic. And like I said, I like how this season, because it's got the 20 episode season, you get those episodes where you can spend time on a character. Um, like I said, you had the Gene episode. You have the episodes with Vito. You had the episodes with you had the episode with um, Chris. You have the episode with Paulie. Now um, you can spend time on these characters. You can flesh them out a little bit more and give them solo arcs, like Artie, for instance, last episode. Or oh, sorry, in episode eight. Um, so yeah, it's great stuff all around. And I hope you guys enjoy my reactions. As always, it's been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.